Which of the following elements would most likely develop a partial positive charge in a bond with chlorine? And then we have A through D, basically. So would it be nitrogen? Would it be oxygen, fluorine, or hydrogen? Okay. Well, for each one of these, we know that we're going to be bound with chlorine. So let's just keep chlorine all the same. So we got Cl, 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 and Cl. And we know that we're going to be making some type of bond. So I'm just going to make a bond here. And then let's just write the other element in. So for the first one, we have a nitrogen. So we have a nitrogen bond. Then we have oxygen. We got fluorine. And then we have hydrogen. And we know, or we want to find out, which one of these, so nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or hydrogen, which one would have a partial positive charge. Now, partial positive charges have everything to do with polarity, and with polarity comes electronegativity. So we are going down the electronegativity route. So we'll say electronegativity. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this, right? We could do it by the electronegativity trend. Uh, we could also gain, you know, grab the electronegativity values from a periodic table. Let's gather some context and then we'll go from there. Now, on a periodic table, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just, I'll bring this a little bit over here. Because on a periodic table, we should at least know the electronegativity trend. And on an electronegativity trend, you should just know the highs and the lows, right? And for electronegativity, the highs and the lows are elements that have Fs in them. Just know the bottom left corner is the lowest point, which is francium. Francium has the lowest electronegativity. And it's from tip to tip, so corner to corner. Francium all the way to fluorine on the periodic table. Fluorine is actually the highest or the most electronegative element. So we will be increasing going from basically F to F, from francium to fluorine. So that means that as we go across a group, sorry, across a period, electronegativity increases, and as we go up, electronegativity increases. So definitely know this trend. So now we just have to pinpoint where these elements are in regards to chlorine. Now, if we want a partial positive charge on one of these atoms, we should know that the chlorine should have the opposite. Chlorine should have the partial negative charge. And the partial negative charge is through this delta symbol. It's like this little cute little s. Partial negative, right? And the partial negative means that you are more electronegative. I mean, the word negative is in electronegativity. So if you have a partial negative charge, that means that you are more electronegative. So I'm just going to put any G. Okay. So for all of these, chlorine is staying constant as being the partial negative. It means that this is the more electronegative one, which means that all of these, in theory, should be the partial positives. But obviously, only one of them is going to be the correct answer. Now, we've already discussed how chlorine is the most electronegative element. And the more electronegative the element, the partial negative it should be. So in this case, you can't get any higher than fluorine. So would fluorine ever be partial positive? Never. Fluorine is always, if we're doing you know, this type of question, it's always going to be partial negative because you can't get any higher in electronegativity than a fluorine. So we already know that fluorine is out. Now we're down to nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Now for this, we could also kind of use the periodic table to see what's up 
but we could also use our electronegativity values. So let's go and head on over to the electronegativity uh, table to gather up those numbers and then we'll just compare them. So here we are, our lovely electronegativity periodic table. We have all of our electronegativities as the bottom numbers. And just to reiterate, right, francium, which is all the way over here, is the lowest electronegativity of being a 0.7, all the way up to the highest electronegativity, which is the other F, which is a big 4.0. Now, chlorine's electronegativity is 3.0, so I'm going to write that one down. But the other two, was a 3.5 from oxygen, a 3.0 for nitrogen, and a 2.0 for hydrogen. So I just have to remember these values. So we got 2.2, 3, 3.5, and another 3. So these are both 3s, 3.5 and 2.2. Okay, I think I got it. You got it? We got it. So let's head on over, and we're going to plug those numbers in. So here we are. Each chlorine was a 3.0. We did say that the nitrogen was also a 3.0. Oxygen was a 3.5. And the hydrogen was a 2.2. Now keep in mind that, remember, if we're saying that chlorine is the partial negative, that means that it has the more pull. It has the higher electronegativity. So when we're talking about a bond, this 3.0 has to be the highest. But for example, for an NCl, for the nitrogen, they have the same electronegativity. So this can't possibly be. This is not correct. If you have the same electronegativity, you actually don't even have any pull. So you wouldn't even have a partial positive and a partial negative. You would just have an equal split. So in this case, this one's out. So now we're down to oxygen and hydrogen. But keep in mind that for oxygen, it's 3.5. This is actually the highest number. If that's the case, this oxygen should be the partial negative. Anytime you're partial negative, you are the higher value. And the chlorine actually should be the positive. But for the hydrogen and the chlorine, Hydrogen's number is lower. Lower values would be partial positive. Higher values are partial negative. This is more electronegative. This is less electronegative. So this checks out, which means that hydrogen is the correct answer. And we are good to go. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video if it helped you out. Tell your friends. Tell your classmates. Um, yeah. And if you want more practice problems, head on over to glazersguide.com. We've got tons of questions just like this if you guys aren't on the website already. But if you guys are, thank you so much for using the website. We have deep dive videos where we give you everything and the kitchen sink um, for basically all the topics that you need for your courses. So come on, check that out. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> come on, check that out. Um, come on now. That reminds me of... Oh, what was that show? Righteous Gemstones, which, by the way, one of my favorite shows. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend. If you have, let me know what you think of it. Um, yeah, sweet baby Billy. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you so much. And I hope you're having a great day out there. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye. For more practice and for more fun, go to glazersguide.com. And for more practice and for more fun, come on, go to glazersguide.com.